Hi, I'm Malika Bilal. I'm Ahmed Shabdin, and you're in the stream. Today we'll hear from an artist who's mixing hip-hop with the history of Indigenous America. Native American artist Frank Wong joins us to share his latest music, and if you're new to the concept of Indigenous hip-hop, then have a listen to this. Never seen a storm come without a win And so I don't no more Rap the plight of the poor Cause educated warriors are vital to war And we battling oppression Got me stressing Wondering if I'll ever learn my lesson Cause I can't let my people go And I can't let my weakness show Even when I'm hopeless And I'm pitiful I keep going on that I'm out I got this aboriginal soul I got this aboriginal flow I got this pain that I can't shake Ties to my people I can't break Got my tribe that shows me love So when I rise, you rise, yeah Come on, let's rise, get it the legacy of broken treaties, colonialism, and Native American genocide are constant themes in Frank Wallen's music. Born on the Rosebud Indian Reservation in rural South Dakota, Wallen uses music to call out historical wrongs and uplift indigenous youth, many of whom struggle from the impacts of poverty, violence, suicide, and other intergenerational traumas. So joining us now is Frank Wallen here in the studio. Welcome to the stream, Frank. Hello, Malika. It's an honor to be here. It's really good to have you here. So, um, you know, this past week, our team and I have been going through your music. It has been lovely homework to have. Um, and we came up with some themes that we thought we found most prevalent in your work, and that is history, heritage, mm -hmm. and family. Mm -hmm. That, to us, is what seems to be the drivers behind your work. For you, mm -hmm. what is it that drives your music? I mean, I think you guys kind of hit it on the head. I, I try to approach my work from an indigenous standpoint, mm -hmm. and that's not to say I have all the answers. Like, I grew up in a settler colony, and my mind was socialized into, you know, um, the Western way of looking at the world. So as I get more in touch with my own culture and my own roots and try to uncover what they took from us, I try to bring that out in my work. So very much at the core of it is love, love for my people, for the land, for my family, love for everything that we're supposed to live in balance with. It's interesting to hear you say that. A lot of people commenting on uh, settler colonialism and kind of the c courage, the creative courage in your lyrics, mm -hmm. specifically uh, John Little on Twitter pointing at uh, one song in particular called What Makes the Red Man Red, saying my favorite line from his music is, quote, you inherited everything we died for and all we get is a goddamn mascot. So uh, since that person brought up a song that, you know, I, I want to hear your answer on that mm -hmm. and what you think of that, I want to share our audience, share with our audience what it sounds like. So have a listen to this on SoundCloud, SoundCloud What Made the Red Man Red. Thanksgiving lies in Columbus Day. Tell me what I know more than the teacher. Tell me what I know more than the preacher. Tell me why you think the red man is red. Stay so you sampled a Disney song. It was uh, from the animated feature, uh, the 1953 animated movie Peter Pan, yes. right? And, and turned it on its head. So tell us about that. So um, I produced my own music, and I, that was the first time I ever actually sampled off vinyl. I found that uh, record in a children's bin in a used vinyl store in Minneapolis for a dollar. And I've always wanted to do something with that song just because Disney has a pretty horrible history of um, uh, stereotyping my people, and it's there in the music. And so I always look for creative ways to flip things like that on their head. like. Um, and I just want to point out that that song is full of racial slurs for indigenous people, but it came off of a children's record. Right. And, and, you know, so I, j just by doing that alone, it kind of shows you where we're at in this country as far as how we look at and treat indigenous people. You have this line in there where you say, what made you think the red man was dead or something, paraphrasing yeah. a little bit. And I know you have a story where... <laughs> That actually happened to you. Someone, yeah. someone is surprised. Yeah, so it was my first um, week. And so I graduated uh, from Columbia College in Chicago. I got my Bachelor of Arts in Audio Arts and Acoustics. And the first week I was there, I was living in a dorm room, uh, in a dorm building in downtown Chicago. And I got in the elevator, and this girl got on the elevator with me. And she was non-native. She commented on my hair. She's like, you have really pretty hair. What are you? And I was like, you know, thank you. I'm Lakota. And she didn't know what that meant. And so I had to be more general. And I was like, I'm Native American. And she looked at me confused and she was like, you guys are still alive? Wow. You know, and just think about that. We got college educated adults living on stolen colonized land that think we don't even exist anymore. Wow. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, people are talking about the reservations. Pe you're saying, you know, people think we don't even exist anymore. Mm -hmm. So much of your culture, sadly, for better or worse, is out of sight and kind of out of mind. A lot of people touching on that um, online, for example, we have uh, Lakota Man on Twitter saying, I currently reside in LA. Are obstacles when talking about, you know, he tweeted us saying the obstacles you face um, on the reservation, other than deeply entrenched institutional racism and post genocidal PTSD, he goes on and on and says there's so much hopelessness. How do you change that sense of hopelessness into hope in your music, or do you? I think, I think you know, I've been thinking about that a lot lately because I grew up in a place where it was, it's, it can get hopeless, and I think when you're survivors of a genocide where less than 1% of your people survived and you've never been able to heal, there's going to be a lot, like you said, you know, like a colonial PTSD, a lot of hopelessness. So I think for me, my work becomes a tool for me to practice hope as almost a mantra, almost like a daily practice, you know. Um, you're, you you got to keep practicing that hope on a daily basis, otherwise it's easy to, to lose hope and let go. So I think my music gives me the tool to practice it on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. What drew you to hip-hop in the first place? Um, the storytelling, the, the, the drums, the, the truth, speaking truth to power. You know, I think at its core, hip-hop um, was created by colonized people who were stolen away from their homeland and stolen away from their culture and trying to recreate something um, that was taken from them. So I think hip-hop at its core is coming from indigenous roots. You know, African folks were, were indigenous people as well. We all are colonized people. So I think that's why as an indigenous person I resonate with it because it was created by colonized people and it's, it's drawing from indigenous traditions at its roots. Mm. You, know, you know, Frank, for as much as we all love hip-hop, and I think we all here do love hip-hop, but uh, some people don't love hip-hop, but they still love you. Uh, Emini loves Jay saying on Twitter, I'm not a fan of hip hop, but it's different with his music. Really great. I love it. Too bad I live so far to ever see him live. Um, she goes on then to say, when we asked, what do you think is different about his music? She said, good question. It might be because he talks about the realities that the government tried so hard to erase. It's important to keep talking and spread the word to those who do not know, and you're doing it extremely well. Are you conscious of that, that you're educating as much as you're entertaining? You know, in the beginning, I wasn't because I was just, you know, um, one thing I was taught from elders in my community is that if you know something, you do it without being asked. And if you, if you learn something, you repeat it so others can learn it. And so I think, you know, I just was talking about those things because it's my life. That history is ingra ingrained in my life. Um, indigenous people, our lives are politicized whether we want it to be or not because our reality was influenced by the U.S. policy and still is today. So I would be lying if I wasn't talking about my, the, my reality in my life, you know. So it just, it just started happening. And then as I started putting out the music, I realized um, yeah. there was a need to educate. Not, not only non-natives, but my own people because we were cut off from that history as well. I didn't know I was... A, came from a colonized nation until I was in my 20s, you know? Really? Yeah. That's wild. Well, uh, in the spirit of education, uh, Frank, I know you're going to perform a new song for us. Um, it's called My People Come From The Land. Mm -hmm. So as you get ready, I wanted to share this video comment that came from Nolan Hack, talking kind of about what we just spoke of. Frank Vaughn and his music speak to me because he is uncompromising and his music is uncompromising. He tells the truth. His music tells the truth. And the, I can identify with that as a black man because I look at something like This is America by Donald Glover and it's, that, it's the same thing. Donald comes out and goes, hey, this is, what, this is what this country has been doing to us for so long. This is what this country is still doing to us right now. Frank's laying it on the table the same way, coming out with an aboriginal, coming out with what makes a red man red and saying, hey, this is what this country has been doing to Native people for hundreds of years. This is what this country is still doing to Native people. My people come from the land. My people come from the land. My people come from the land. On which you stand, still fighting the white man, still fighting the white. Birth of a rebel, I rebel, my nation living in peril with several flows. I'm armed, wrestling with white devils, disheveled but never settle. Settlers ain't on my level, give me base, give me treble. I'm trouble but never tremble. We kindled the seven council fires, keepers of the flame, land of the burnt thigh. It's even in my name. 
I'm a symbol, see jungle is how I rumble I may stumble, but me yo yate get kichi ta I never crumble Survivors of genocide, the trauma's got me trapped I used to keep it inside until I decide to rap My ancestors ain't died for me to lie on my back Can't take it sitting down, instead I'm fighting back Fuck your system, fuck your capitalism They took the land, made us sick and gave us alcoholism They took away our wisdom, they took away our health We're gonna get it back and we're gonna honor ourselves My people come from the land, on what you stand My people come from the land, on what you stand My people come from the land, free the land Free the land, free the land I got 500 years to get off the dome My mama held me down while pops was a rolling stone So let me in my zone when my mic is on Cause I spit bars for you native kids at home Who got wounds and scars, who dreams go far You got a jump shot, then you're a red suit Star. Cruise around in rest cars, disregard their laws We don't know no better when adults withdraw Bumping first of the month, on the first of the month From the womb to the hearse, dirt insures what I want Selling food stamps, I could give you 40 for 20 All these damn handouts, but ain't no way to make money This whack 80% unemployment rate Ain't no way to make sure my fam is straight my brother did a crime and the feds show hate We still face genocide in this colonial state Our ceremonies were banned They cut our grandparents' brains Took them to that boarding school where our grandparents stayed Cut them off from the ways that their grandparents prayed They're trying to build a pipeline over my grandparents' grave There ain't no stopping this res life from blinding us Ain't no stopping these problems from finding us It's like I run with nowhere to go my nation is a rosebud with nowhere to grow. My people come from the land on which you stand. My people come from the land on which you stand. Still fighting the white man, still fighting the white. Me ka o ya de ki ma koche So, so powerful. Wow. You are watching the stream with the hip-hop indigenous artist Frank Wallen, and that was uh, one of his latest songs that previewing here on the stream for the Amazing. very first time. So we're, we're so quite good. privileged. Our, our, our followers online know that we're privileged here. This is uh, one person on Twitter who says, so happy to be watching this live stream with Frank Wallen. Someone else on YouTube watching live says, I love this. The history of Native Americans is so important and needs to be taught and retained. That's Lana S on Facebook, and it's interesting what she says. The history needs to be taught, it needs to be retained, because y your line in the song is, my people come from the land. And you talk about um, uh, historical tragedies of the white man, but they're still ongoing today. Do you think enough people understand that? Um, honestly, I think not, and I think you know, people's reactions to what's happening right now at the border is a great example of that. If you understood this history from a settler colonial lens, you would understand this history has, a, or this country has a deep history of t separating indigenous children from their parents. I mean, the same thing happened to my great grandparents. They were snatched up and taken to boarding school. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, what's happening today is just a continuation of one of the founding pillars this country was built on. And uh, just, just to pause you there, just because I know some people in our audience may not be familiar with boarding schools. Oh, Some yeah. might think that sounds like yeah. a good thing, yeah, but yeah. these were indoctrination uh, yeah. schools. Yeah, Can yeah, so Indian boarding schools in this country, and um, this happened to my great grandparents. They came into our homes under, uh, you know, under orders of the U.S. government and snatched up all of our children from the U.S. up to Canada, and they, um, 
they took my great grandparents from home and I don't know what happened to them, but I know that they never spoke our language again and never passed on any of our culture mm -hmm. after that. So I can't imagine you what you would have to do to a small child to make them stop speaking their language. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know my great grandparents were fluent in our language until they were after they were passed on and I was in my 20s because they kept it that much of a secret. They felt that being native was something to be ashamed of because these schools taught all of our ancestors that and this country is built on the dehumanization of indigenous people, you know, and that in Indian boarding schools are, are one of those tactics they used. You know, when you talk about the dehumanization, whether it's Native Americans and, you know, language and land and these symbols, um, your message is obviously resonating. Thick Shady on, uh, Twitter, on Twitter saying is such an extraordinary musician talking about you, of course. His lyrics have the strength to render the overarching American culture speechless. However, I think creating music by Native people for Native people and presenting a positive Native figure is more important to him and his music. Uh, you smile as I kind of finish that tweet. Why is that? Is that um, I think it's cool whenever my fans kind of, you know, because um, the people who follow my work are usually hardcore fans because I don't got, you know, there's not a lot of, it's hard being an indigenous person, an indigenous artist speaking about these things, trying to make it in, a, in an entertainment system built in a, in a settler colony, built on the dehumanization of your people, you know? It'd be like saying, um, well, is a Palestinian rapper talking about Israel gonna make it in an Israeli um, record label? Are they gonna get promoted in Israel? Not really, you know? And it's the same thing with us here. Um, it's hard to, to, to you know, break through to the popular American culture as an indigenous artist speaking on these sorts of things. So I smile because, um, you know, the people that follow me get it, and, and, it, I, and I just smile because, you know, she hit it right on the head. Well, and people follow him from all over the world. Because you brought up Palestine, I just quickly want to bring um, their voice into this conversation, because I know you recently took a trip there. We also have a Palestinian fan on Twitter saying, I feel like parts of his lyrics can also be applied to the Palestinian struggle. People, as someone who grew up in a country where I always got silenced when I talked about what horrors Israel put Palestinians through, and, you know, she goes on and on. Mm -hmm. um, she at the end really says that what, what stood out to her right here, she says, to know someone with a voice as powerful as his is addressing those same problems and hardships and maybe tying bridges to her experience is really uh, powerful to her. What was that trip like to you? Um, that trip was life changing. It was a year ago. I spent 11 days. I went with a group called Dream Defenders. I went with a delegation of artists, and I was very grateful. I was the only indigenous person, but um, you know, I was aware that settler colonialism was happening out there. Mm -hmm. But when I was actually in Palestine for 11 days, it was very, I will say, spiritually triggering because I, I saw almost sometimes almost like line for line what happened to my ancestors from like open air prison systems, our reservations, basically to setting the government setting up laws to make our lives live hell and make us want to leave and so you know um, I'm definitely g gonna write a song about for Palestine one day and the thing that just keeps coming to my head was I, I looked in the eyes of Palestine and I saw my own reflection you know I like, saw the reflection of my people and what we went through and, and, and it really shook me to my core in a way I haven't yet found the words to describe but I know it's gonna come out in my music soon. Mm -hmm. I, I love what you're saying there and it, 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 it explains why you've been called this. Take a look at my screen here. Frank Wallen's The Bridge is the sound of an indigenous generation rising. Frank Wallen has been making moves. He's built a large and devoted audience of fans, and he's been dubbed the Bob Marley of the Lakota for the way that he envisions music as a force for love, struggle, healing, and social change. So that's one person's perspective there. But I, I like that they're talking about the things that are in your music, the love, the struggle, the healing, and the social change. I, I read in an interview that you were about 21 when you started this journey, came into music, and you did it because you said it was an act of survival. Mm -hmm. So that seems to resonate throughout your lyrics. Talk to us about that feeling, that mm -hmm. music is your means of survival. Yeah, well, you know, gr growing up um, in the place where I grew up on the Rosewood Reservation, um, it wasn't an easy place to grow up. It's one of the poorest counties in this country. I was raised by a single mom. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of beautiful things there, our culture, and, you know, um, we're reviving our language. And there's a lot of things at home I can't get anywhere else in the world. But because of colonialism and genocide, there's a lot of things there that can actually kill me, too. So, you know, um, whenever I'm talking about um, uh, music as an act of survival, it started when I was seven. I started playing piano when I was seven. And, and I've struggled with um, anxiety, depression, and suicide for most of my life. And I think a lot of Native people feel the same way, even if we're not aware of it or don't talk about it. And music um, 
at a certain point in my life was the only thing that made me feel like I wanted to be alive. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think my spirit was just trying to tr trying to keep me alive and trying to keep me going. And music was one of those things like, you know, people ask me why. And I say, like, I, it's like an itch I have to scratch. I was born to make music. I was born to do this. I was born to see what you just seen me do. And my life would be a waste if I weren't fulfilling my purpose. You know, it kind of goes back to that teaching. I said, if you know something, you do it without being asked. And I know I'm born to make music. And it took me a while to realize that I can do that because I didn't believe in myself. I didn't have the tools. I didn't have the resources. And it was kind of like just pouring myself into the work out of survival led me to where I'm at and then people started following and before I knew it I had a career going. Mm -hmm. And it seems like, Frank, more people are following you. Henrik on YouTube, who's watching live, said, yes, I am sold. This is great. Thank you so much. <laughs> but we also have a more substantive comment from Megan saying, Frank, you're an extremely proud Lakota man. Have you ever personally struggled with American culture telling you, you to feel self-hatred or even ashamed of your culture? I mean, I don't think like explicitly no one's ever told me that, but all you got to do is look at the media and how like the type of media I grew up with of portraying native people. It was things like Disney's Peter Pan. You know, it was um, whenever I saw it was on the news, it was really only poverty porn. You know, they would only come in and cherry pick the, the negative stories and never talk about the history of why things are the way they are on our reservations and never show the hopeful side. And it was just become this, oh, Native Americans are lazy, we're alcoholic, we're drug addicts, you know, we're deadbeat dads, all these statistics. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, looking, looking at the way the media has treated my people and looking at historically the way this country and Americans have treated my people yeah. for over 500 years, they've been telling us to feel shame about who we are and to like not be native actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, Frank, you mentioned uh, y your older generation's language mm -hmm. and I'll give our viewers a little bit of a fun fact trivia for this next <laughs> album that's coming out. Uh, he actually had to learn the Lakota language and used an app mm -hmm. to help you along with it, yeah. right? Yeah, so I'm not fluent, so I didn't grow up speaking my language because it, it in my family, it kind of went away with my great grandparents when they mm -hmm. passed on. So I feel like if I learn my language and use my, my, my path and my art as the vehicle, I can maybe heal some of those wounds my great grandma and great grandpa had. I don't, I don't know what, what they took to the grave, you know, mm -hmm. but I know if I can help in, in any way bring our language back, I can, um, I can heal that. And I really believe that through art, indigenous people are anybody. We have the ability to time right. travel. You can heal past, present, and future. I love that. So you're going to get a little taste. Frank is going to play us out with a song in the Lakota language called Wana Wichichaga. For our audience who doesn't speak Lakota, this is what the song roughly translates to. I have it on my screen here. Nation, people. Now we thrive and prosper. When your spirit speaks, listen thoroughly. The fire is coming back to life. Help each other. You've been watching the stream with indigenous hip hop artist Frank Walm. Frank, take it away. Yapo, hoka. Oh, yeah, one now with Chichaga, one now with Chichaga, one now with Chichaga. Oh, yeah, one now with Chichaga, oh, yeah, one now with Chichaga, one now with Chichaga, one now with Chichaga. Oh, yeah, one now with Chichaga, one now with Chichaga, one now with Chichaga. Oh, yeah, one now. Wanna, wanna we chichaga. Wanna we chichaga. Wanna we chichaga. Wanna we chichaga. Hoka, hey, hoka, hey. Hoka, hey. Nina ki wo glake e hanta taya, ana ho taya, ana ho taya. Preta ki, ki ni ya ye o ichi ya. Chiapo, Ninaki will black it, hunt a dying, a knock of dying, a knock of dying, Fred Daki, Kimi Yagi, Oichiapo, Oichiapo.
hoka oya se wana wi chichaga wana wi chichaga wana chichaga oya se wana wi chichaga 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 wana wi chichaga